Tonight we welcome you to Huntington, West Virginia. Tonight we welcome you to Huntington, West Virginia, the home of the Thundering Herd of Marshall, as we move inside the Cam Henderson Center, and the Thundering Herd are getting ready for a shootout with the 49ers of Charlotte, as the American Sports Network takes you one game deeper into the Conference USA season. Hi everybody, along with Mark Adams, I'm Mike Leeson. It's always great to have you with us for more college basketball. And Mark, if you're a college basketball fan that likes high scoring games, and most do, you certainly should enjoy this one. There's two kinds of coaches, whoa and go. And we've got two coaches that really go tonight in Conference USA. If you like a lot of points, I think there's going to be 200 plus combined between these two teams. 200 plus will hold you to it. There you go. You know, talk about Marshall. They've won nine of 12, and uh, Charlotte comes in winners of six of the last eight. A real testament to that coaching staff, both sides, considering the way the season started. I saw both of these two teams early on, and they were in a word awful. Charlotte opened one and eight. Nine and seven cents, one of the hot teams in Conference USA. And Marshall, the Thundering Herd, 0 for 0 and 6, now 13 and 6 combined. Look at those two teams now, 22 and 13 in conference play. What a turnaround by Charlotte and Marshall. For Charlotte, it's about Mark Price and what he has done, not only as a player in the NBA, he shot 40% for his career from the three point line, 2.7 to 1 assist to turnover ratio as a senior at Georgia Tech. Tech averaged 75 points a game. As a coach, look at the numbers. Nearly identical as his team numbers reflect his playing career in the NBA and at Georgia Tech. For the Marshall Thundering Herd, it's really about that name, Dan Tony. There's Mike's jersey right there, number 10. Dan is the coach today. In 1966 to 69, the Thundering Herd averaged 84 points a game. This year, Dan's Thundering Herd averaged 85 and 93 in conference games. There's two kinds of coaches. Go and go. Get ready for some go in Conference USA tonight. All right, Mark, let's go right into the starting lineups. And speaking of scoring, 
All five starters for Charlotte averaging double figures. Uh, Joseph Ochibo, one of two players in Conference USA, averaging a double-double. Four of the five for Marshall in double figures. Austin Loop at nine, so he's right behind. James Kelly in conference play, just under 24 points and 9.8 rebounds a game. Mark Price, you talked about the NBA, 12 years in the NBA. Goes down as one of the all-time great shooters, a member of Dream Team 2. His number 25 jersey, retired by the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, of course, Dan D'Antoni, nine years in the NBA with the Suns, the Knicks, and the Lakers. You know what, Mark? You think about the NBA and naturally, but Dan D'Antoni, over 500 victories on the high school level in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina as well. No, and his dad was one of the legendary coaches at Mullen High School as well here in West Virginia. And we'll be talking to him in the second half here tonight. 102 years young, Louis D'Antoni. And this ball game is underway and controlled by the thundering herd. Duke Edsel, Terry Oglesby, and John Hampton and wearing these striped shirts and blowing the whistles tonight. Kelly goes right to the rack and kisses it off the window for a quick bucket. I have waited a while to see James Kelly in person. I've loved him when I've seen him watching video, watching games. He's such a dynamic athletic talent. Number 24 in black, James Kelly of Marshall. Back in January, 103-95, the final score in Charlotte. The 49ers prevailing. They had a 19-point lead in that ball game at one juncture, but uh, Marshall came back and almost pulled it out. And Green White uh, misfires. He's been red hot from three. Shoots the air ball. And Ryan Taylor goes right back. Ochibo has his first rebound. Well, it's so interesting to watch these two teams get a rebound and just go with it. Moments ago, you mentioned in conference play that Marshall averaging about 93 points a game. Charlotte comes in at 78 overall, 83 in conference play. This is uh, Scott outside, misfires. Ochibo with yet another rebound, his first offensive rebound, and it pops out, and it's ripped down by Kelly. Oh, Kelly just so strong. Ochibo just bounced off of him on that second rebound. How about the numbers those guys put up back in January, huh? Ochibo, 24 points, 21 rebounds. 24 points for Kelly, 14 rebounds. Outside shot, ring it up, that's a three ball by Austin Loop. That's number 65 this year for him. Austin Loop has been in single digits 10 out of his last 11 games. That's a very good start for Marshall. He hasn't shot it as well or scored as well. Mark, I'm told if he gets about 10 shots a game, if he gets the 10, he's gonna score in double figures. So White comes back after the air ball and looked a lot more comfortable on that shot. And Andrian White is a guy that can really get it going in droves. You mentioned his 30 points, 10 rebounds the last time against Marshall. Scott doesn't have numbers, and he's rejected, and the foul will go against the Thundering Herd. So Curran Scott will go to the line. Now Scott shooting about 83%. Both the teams, good free throw shooting teams, are both under 70, which surprises me. Yeah, Curran Scott goes, look at the bigs for Marshall just converge on the dribble penetration. Ryan Taylor commits the foul. That's his first. So Kern goes to the line, the 6'4 freshman. He was the first rookie to score 30 for Mark Price. He dropped 30 against UAB. Then Andrean White came back and uh, dropped 30 in the very next game. So back-to-back 30-point -back games for a couple of uh, rookies for Mark Price. I saw Kern Scott early for Mark Price, and he couldn't make shots. He's really developed into a respectable three-point shooting threat during the season. That's very unusual. Usually that happens out of season. But the extra work and also the shot doctor preparation by Mark Price has really helped Kern Scott. Yeah, I was surprised when we talked to uh, Mark Price. There's a nice block inside by Davis. A kick out and another air ball shot from three-point territory. When talking with Mark Price earlier today, I was surprised that he said uh, Scott wasn't that great of a three-point shooter before because Boy, in conference play, he's almost 50%. Been unbelievable. Joseph Ochibo, he wants it. That's James Kelly matched up with him. He gets it. Ochibo, well, hook shot doesn't go right before the shot clock buzzer went off. Marshall with a 5-4 lead to make it 7-4 with a nice drive to the rack by Stevie Browning. Now Stevie Browning just made his own way. Double-figure score almost over 12 points per game. 
Stevie Browning, one of those guys that could draw an extra defender, get assists, score it. Marshall just so hard to guard. 49ers right now, there's the foul, so Ochibo goes to the line. The Niners have been red hot the last two games, opening up one for five here on the road. They had 66 second half points, Mark, against Rice, and they followed that up with 56 first half points against North Texas. Mark Price is a very low-key, very even guy, but he got a little bit upset at halftime of that Rice game and challenged his team as only Mark Price can. I mean, no profanity, nothing like that. <laughs> kind of insinuated there might be cream puffs. <laughs> I don't and know. the team responded. I don't know. I heard from a good source in the locker room that he didn't insinuate. He called them cream, cream puffs. Cream puffs, yeah. And he said that was the first thing that came to his mind. But. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't know if I've ever, I, I know I've never called my name cream puffs. <laughs> my, my team's cream puffs. You know, it worked. They were, but I never called yeah. them that. It worked because they came out and <laughs> 66 points, 66 27. Mike Rhodes, the head coach of Rice, just had this look on his face like, what in the heck just happened? Now, both these teams can just explode offensively. Watch the spacing of Marshall. Watch how they spread defenders. It's going to be the turnover. Uh, Stevie Browning thought he was fouled, but he carried the basketball. He palmed it. Uh, so, turnover for Marshall. They come in averaging about 13 turnovers. That's their second of the ball game. Boy, Dan D'Antoni, he was fun to talk to today, huh? He really was. Very engaging guy. His NBA background, I think, gives Marshall a differentiated look in college basketball. They are fun to watch. Davis, open look. The Boise outside, a little bit too strong, and the rebound is uh, taken down by Kelly. That's his third already. Kelly goes the distance and Whoa. gets the bucket. Wow. James Kelly fought for physical position for 70 feet of that drive. He was basically saddled up and moving down the floor. That was a tremendous play by James Kelly. And another steal by the Thundering Herd. And the Herd making some noise. There's a block down on the low post against Charlotte. And we're inside 16 minutes, so we're going to take a timeout. Stevie Browning. 6-3 guard out of Logan, West Virginia with a nice drive on the baseline. His first bucket, he's averaging just under 13, and right now the Thundering Herd opening up a 9-5 lead here early in Huntington. Tonight's Conference USA game on ASN is brought to you by the Hands of Experience at St. Mary's Medical Center ER. There's a clear choice when you have your next emergency. When it's serious, it's St. Mary's. 9-5 Thundering Herd on top of the 49ers as they try to avenge that 103-95 loss earlier. James Kelly, watch what he does as he drives 94 feet. He is being saddled up all the way down, but he has enough strength to finish. This is Draymond Green-like right there. That's the strength that it takes to hold off a separate big for 94 feet, Mike. That's an incredible play by James Kelly. Four points, three rebounds already. Kelly uh, comes into the game with 11 double-doubles, second most in uh, Conference USA. 
as Terrence Thompson the 6 7 sophomore out of Durham uh, steps to the line. Speaking of double doubles uh, Thompson had 12 of those in junior college play. Matter of fact he averaged a double double in the uh, national junior college tournament last year and he goes one for two from the strike. And they double up the score 10 to 5 right now. Charlotte one for six Mark they shot 56 percent and 57 percent the last two games. Charlotte is a mirror image of Marshall offensively. They also spread the floor look for dribble penetration routes. It's interesting you, you use the word mirror both coaches during their shoot arounds. It's exactly what they said. huh? We just mirror each other. They both give their team so much offensive freedom freedom. They spread the floor. They look for mismatches and then they expose those mismatches. Another open look for three if it goes it doesn't and white clears. Partially deflected and Ochibo tries to save but Kelly comes down with the basketball. Marshall with a chance to build on the 10 5 lead. You know, and neither team really worries too much if they get a lot of inside out touches on the block. They'll catch it in the mid range game just to expose the mismatch. Great ball movement. And an open look. It started with James Kelly on the backside as he read a defender cheating his way, and all of a sudden, one pass, two pass, wide open Marshall thundering herd. Charlotte, they've, they've missed their last four shots. Open look of Boise deep in the corner, rims out. Ochibo rips down the rebound and a good job of uh, sneaking in is John Elmore knocks it out of bounds. Wait look at the scores huh, in this game. It's really a result of both coaches who are go kind of coaches all the way from current Scott up to James Kelly. We've got a lot of conference USA volume scoring in this game tonight. Nice look and they missed the bunny on the inbounds play. Uh, Ochibo would love to have that one back. Well, Mark, uh, you're a coach. Sometimes it's better to dunk it. Wow. Or just step outside Holy and hit a three cow. like Kelly does. Man, is he good. I've watched him from afar. What an honor it is to be here tonight in Huntington, West Virginia. Wow. Well, Mark Price calls the timeout with 13.54 to go because now it's 15 to 5. The 49ers shooting 10% on the road, and they have been just blistering the nets the last couple of games. Talk about the great ball movement. Watch the matchup here as they get the ball down in the midsection of the defense in that dead area. A one handed pass as James Kelly reads the rotating defenders and finds a wide open teammate in Terrence Thompson. And then come down on the next possession. James Kelly was about 26 feet out and just drained the three ball. Number 33 for Kelly as far as uh, hitting those shots from long range. He's got seven. Look how far he is out. I mean, there was about a month ago when I started talking about James Kelly, and I thought he was a Draymond Green type of player, and also I compared him to Charles Barkley when Barkley was at Auburn. When you look at his size, he's actually bigger than Barkley. When you look at his ability to stretch a defense and put the ball on the floor and the strength, Mike, this kid is special. Yeah, Barkley's what, 6'5", he's 6'8"? Yeah, he's bigger. Davis gets his pocket picked. Elmore gives it up. Poor execution. White in transition. Gets the bucket. Good job of reaction from Charlotte. They never gave up on that play. Elmore with a bad decision in the open court. Fifteen to seven. Marshall on top. College game a lot of times is about spacing and ball movement and on ball screens. We look at the cold start for Mark Price's bunch, two for 11 tonight, 0 for 5 from three. In the pros, it's more about spacing and player mismatches, and that's what we're seeing in this game. Well, you spend five minutes with uh, Dan D'Antoni, and you know that uh, he loves to talk about the, the offenses that he and his brother Mike ran with the Suns, with the Knicks, with the Lakers. 
And what was he insinuating that uh, Mark Rice actually uh, got some of that offense from one of his assistant coaches who was was with the Knicks at one point, right? Yeah, Mark Price. Listen, coaches are great at bag barring and stealing. And Dan D'Antoni and the D'Antoni brothers are known for their innovative offense. Of course, Mark Price known as a great shooting coach. And he's actually taken a little bit of that philosophy as we take a look. Speaking of shooting, huh? <laughs> Elmore, that's number 50 for him. He's just so good from deep. He's so balanced. He's coming off a double-double, 24 points and 10 assists double-double against Western Kentucky in that, that tight victory. Well, Boise trying to ignite something going for Charlotte, so Boise uh, drops in a three ball. You know, Boise can score in bunches, and Mike, just to capitalize on your earlier point, Kenny Atkinson was an assistant with the Knicks under Mike, and now he's on Mark Price's staff. It helps the network, huh? Well, Boise, incidentally, that was number 78 from long range for him, and there's a turnover. And it goes against Rydell Kamich, the 6'3 sophomore out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Three turnovers now. Look at that. Marshall almost 12 threes in conference play. Charlotte not far behind at 9.8. Marshall, they'll attempt about 29 and a half attempts. Charlotte comes in at about 21, but that being said, they tried 31 threes against North Texas. There's the, another whistle. and. It's going to go against Davis again. It's going to be his second. He's got back-to-back -back fouls, and uh, Scott coming back in now for Mark Price. Now, the guy that intrigues me for Marshall is John Elmore. Of course, his dad was a West Virginia Player of the Year. He was as well. That's a pretty good athlete right there as well. And Stevie Browning with the slam. Stevie, That's Sports Center stuff. He obviously has not seen. The Woody Harrelson movie, huh? White men can't jump. Boy, he was elevated as Oboise knocks down number 79 now. So it looks like Oboise's going to ignite the uh, Charlotte offense now after a slow start. This one's knocked out of bounds. It's going to be uh, Marshall basketball when we come back. Time out on the floor. Braxton Oboise loading it up and knocking it down. He's a shooter. He's a leader. One, the only true returner trying to lead Charlotte back in this game here in Huntington. Welcome back inside the Cam Henderson Center in Huntington. Thundering herd by seven over Charlotte. Stevie Browning over the cross court pass. A bad closeout right there, not under control. And Stevie Browning just with the deposit. Got a big time dunk against West Virginia I saw online. That was impressive. He's an impressive jumper, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Kelly probably leads the team in dunks. I know they don't keep that stat, but Browning can't be far behind. So Kelly, 7.6 rebounds already. Yet to miss a shot. He's three for three. Now this kid at 6'8", he's got great lower body strength. 
He's chiseled in the upper body. He can shoot the ball from deep. He can put the ball on the floor. He can play with his back to the basket. James Kelly, one of those guys that's flown underneath the radar and all the player of the year types of comparisons. Nobody's been talking about him except me. And I'm gonna keep talking about him until somebody listens. You're talking Conference USA? I'm talking all over the country. This kid can play. Now, I, just, I understand. I think Buddy Heald is the player of the year, but you know what? Everybody else gets lost in the shuffle. And nobody talks about other great players like James Kelly. It's gonna be interesting to see if Kelly or Trey Freeman from uh, Old Dominion, how many votes they get for a player of the year in this league. Kelly, of course, number two scorer in the league, number three rebounder in Conference USA. Boy, what an addition he's been for Dan D'Antoni. It was Ryan Taylor last year was the double-double machine for Dan Tony. When you look at UAB with Chris Copley and Robert Brown and William Lee and Nick Norton, and that's that's a foursome right there that does different things for Jared Haas and, and UAB. UAB on top of the league, Middle Tennessee right on their heels with Giddy Potts, Reggie Upshaw, Karen Buford, I like their, that team too. I'll be there next week against Western Kentucky. That's a great rivalry game. Yeah, this Marshall team in striking distance at nine and three now. Yep. UAB, of course, uh, coming out that loss over the weekend to Louisiana Tech. Or Law Tech at eight and four, 19 and six overall. Should make an interesting down in Birmingham at the Conference USA Tournament. Last year, of course, UAB got hot and they even won one in the uh, NCAA Tournament. They closed out the year losing to FIU and FAU. And then they turn around, won the Conference USA Tournament. Uh, granted, it's in Birmingham, so that certainly helps having the home crowd. That's a three ball, a much needed one by Cambridge. Boy, he exploded out of the gates in the first uh, game in Charlotte, 18 points. The last four, he's uh, shooting about 26% from three, so that should get him going, or at least Mark Price would hope so. I saw Charlotte the very first game of the season when they played Elon and just got hammered in the first half. They were down 30 in that game. It was just a bunch of disparate parts. They don't play that way anymore. They really play well together. Deep three, doesn't go. Niners had the running shoes on, but they get stripped again. Marshall up five. Elmo with the runner, make it seven. He's highly skilled offensively, isn't he? Number 33, John Elmore. He's a nice player. I like his stroke. I like his offensive game. And, you know, he's only played 17 games because uh, when he transferred from VMI, he became eligible December 14th. He had 98 assists coming in in 17 games. That's about 6.7. Last night, Mike, John Elmore and his dad, Gay Elmore, were out shooting the basketball at 8 o'clock in the arena last night. Just father and son. I asked dad about, do you coach your son? He goes, no, I'm strictly the rebounder now. <laughs> nice spin move, the open look, Scott deep, leaves it short. Follows the shot, and Browning's gonna be charged with the foul as they both went for the rebound. That's gonna be his first. There's Gay right there, the player of the year in West Virginia back in 1982. Matter of fact, that's the only father-son combination to win player of the year in West Virginia. They have such a special relationship, and of course, John came home in order to take care of his sick grandfather. His grandfather has since passed away, but father and son out there shooting the basketball together, that's quite a scene. Boy, nice drive uh, that time by C.J. Burks. That's his first bucket. But well, we've got three freshmen in this game. Burks has been the freshman of the week twice. White for Charlotte twice. Davis for Charlotte twice. And Kern pops in the uh, baseline jumper. Now, Kern Scott has done a good job of finding open areas to get his points. He moves well without the basketball. Elmore. Wow. You know who he reminds me of? Jason Williams. Yeah. Play, played doesn't his high need school much ball. space. Doesn't need much space to shoot it, does it? Well, boys, he tries to answer a little bit just too strong. Here we go. This one's going to go against Charlotte. Curran Scott is charged with his second. Yeah, this Marshall crowd, this home court advantage is starting to kind of get a lot of life to it. Dan and Tony, Dan, Dan, Dan and Tony has done a great job of bringing fans back to this arena. And they're starting to become some rabid fans here in Huntington. That's a great point you bring up because this has been a football town for years. And Dan D'Antoni trying to change that just his second season. 
But Boise t rips down another rebound. As a matter of fact, down underneath the basket, he's got uh, Marshall Militia. And he wants to be at like the Izone at Michigan State and the zoo up in uh, Pittsburgh and Cameron Crazies. You know, Mark, the way kids like to transfer now, too, especially those fifth year seniors, uh, I think the word's going to get out that let's go play for Dan D'Antoni because uh, of the way they play, the offense they play. Yeah, you're going to get shots. You're going to get shots, but you're also going to be expected to play defense. This is an underrated defensive team as well. Great defense by Charlotte. Nice steal. The kick out, and White decides to take it to the rack, and he is rejected by Kelly. In transition, a three. Boy, if that went down, Mark, this place would have exploded. What a great job of Marshall looking for backside boards off that shot from Elmore on the left-hand side. Two black jerseys just jammed down on the backside glass out of the full-court pressure situation. 49ers now one of their last six, two of their last nine, trying to climb back into this. So they go inside to the big man, and Ochibo, that's his first field goal. Ochibo, that's the first time he's really gotten a pretty decent look at the basket, a clean look at the basket. There's a deep, deep, deep three by Kelly. Doesn't go. Look at White just run. I love watching these two teams play. <laughs> it's, it is fun. Held ball situation. The arrow points down here, so Charlotte will retain. We're inside eight minutes, so seven minutes, five seconds to go. We're going to step away with another timeout. Marshall trying to get to 10 and three. Right now, they lead it by eight, 28 to 20. John Elmore, when he's open, you got to look for him. Right there, a little floater inside. Marshall up eight at home. They're warming up here in Huntington. And back in Huntington, 28 to 20, seven minutes and five seconds to go in the first half here. And you talk about the three-point shooting teams. I mean, Oboise now with uh, a couple of threes already tonight. He's got 79 this year. But, boy, you can look at either side, and you've got some impressive numbers. There's Andrian White there from Charlotte. Curran Scott, we saw him knock down a three earlier. John Elmore, he is fearless in the open court situation. Braxton, Oboise, all those guys would just line up the national rankings in the NCAA, and we're seeing them all here tonight. And they are more than happy to let it fly <laughs> at any time. They certainly are, there's no doubt about that. So Charlotte's uh, still trying to get something going, though, as far as finding that rhythm offensively. But again, keep in mind what they did against Rice in the second half, they really got it going. 66 second half points. Back-to-back -back games over the century mark. A little bit too strong that time by Kamich. Plus six right now on the glass for Marshall, and they're not a great rebounding team. They come in at minus three. Although it uh, certainly helps uh, the cause when Charlotte's uh, missing shots as Kelly takes it in the lane. 
19 three-point attempts so far in the first half. Another steal. Again, it's Kelly. Kelly opened up three for threes, missed his last three shots. But that won't stop him from taking it to the rack. I like the way Van Hook recognizes open court situation and pushes it. Number 15 and White. Good ball movement there by Charlotte. Can't knock it down. Yeah, when you talk about uh, Van Hook, he's the kind of guy that's going to get you four or five rebounds. If he takes six shots, he's going to make four. As a matter of fact, he made six of six the last game. So last foul goes on Ochibo. That's going to be his first. 16 fouls now on Charlotte. Just three for Marshall as we move inside six minutes. Now this is the end where Charlotte really has to exert their defensive will. Giving up 50% right now to this hot shooting Marshall team. A couple of junior college teammates, Justin Edmonds trying to feed Kelly. Knocked out of bounds and it stays uh, with Marshall. Marshall hasn't scored a bucket in the last three minutes and three seconds. Kelly will try to rectify that with a three top of the key. He does. They're just letting him shoot it. He's way downtown. He's made a couple of those already. And he's in double figures already with 11 points. 11 points, nine rebounds, I'm told. Kamich. Well, he hit that one three, but he's missed his last two now. Nice job finding the open man. Better job putting him in the rack. So Austin Luke with a couple of threes. You know, as good as Marshall is offensively, I'm really impressed with their defense in the first half. And it has been one and done for Charlotte the entire first half. They've defended well and rebounded well. Oh, well, Boise. Reverse doesn't go. Ochibo with another offensive rebound. Brand new 30-second clock. Drive with the left hand, and as I mentioned, there's Van Hook with his first bucket. Very, very productive young man. He's very versatile. He's kind of a utility guy, does a lot of everything. You can run him through the high post. He can face up on the perimeter. He can lead a break. I like number 15 in white, Anthony Van Hook. He does a lot of little things that maybe the fans in Charlotte don't always recognize. And he knows his role, and he accepts it, huh? Especially for a junior college yeah. kid. High off the window doesn't go. Boise, one of the smaller guys on the floor. Pulls it down. There's an open look for Kamen. She has to take that one, and he missed it. Over Van three Hook now. again. Good hustle. Watch out. Bird's got some numbers. Whistle before that shot. Way back here in the backcourt. They're going to call it against Van Hook. I so think he just that got might have been a technical up. foul. Yeah, Van Hook. Very quiet player. Obviously said something, so he gets teed up. And Austin Luke, an 84% shooter, is heading for the line, and Mark Rice wants an exclamation, explanation. Well, Van Hook on the opposite end, he started that possession by running down a long pass with the first pass. He got an offensive rebound, then got his hand on another one. It's pretty physical down there. He might have felt like he got fouled. And Mark Price, I think, is going to take him out. I'd love to know what he said or did because Van Hook, uh, that's certainly not his uh, character. Usually a very quiet and productive player. Luke now with seven. Make it eight. Boy, he's almost automatic at the line, isn't he? Yeah, he's got a really nice looking stroke. In Austin Luke, he was in double figures. Eight of the first 14 games for the Thundering Herd. Only 10 out of the last 11. So if they can get his offensive going again, like he did earlier in the season, that's another weapon for Dan D'Antoni. Catch and shoot, a little bit too strong, and the long rebound comes out to Luke. Boy, Luke's doing some good things for Marshall, and the crowd appreciates it. Edmonds going to his, his buddy. Browning is there. There's an open look deep in the corner, and it doesn't go. Another whistle, and the foul goes against Ochipo. And Ochipo's pleading his case. The Marshall Thundering Herd never shy from deep. James Kelly knocks one down. Austin Loop, let it fly. They're scoring points here at Marshall. Thank you. 
More college basketball from Conference USA coming up on ASN right after our ball game. It's a big one too. Louisiana Tech, UTSA. La Tech uh, coming off that victory right now over UAB over the weekend. They've won four straight. So they've got uh, UAB at 11 and two, a Middle Tennessee at 10 and three, La Tech at eight and four, and as we mentioned, thundering herd of Marshall at nine and three within striking distance of first place. They were over at the monitor mark and checking to see if that was a flagrant foul against Joseph Ochibo. And apparently it wasn't. Yeah, it didn't look like it in real time, but they went over and checked it out. How about Eric McCree and that 30 point performance to knock off UAB for La Tech? Okay, the one place you never want to go play a game if you're a visiting team is at La Tech. No, no. Boy, 12 points already for uh, Kelly, and uh, speaking of 30 point games. Kelly's has four. I think there's been like uh, 18 or 19 30 point games in Conference USA already this year. Nothing but net for Kelly. He's got 13. And nine rebounds. He's nearly at a double double for the half. Andrea White takes it to the rack. Nice job. I thought he was going to try the three, but he, uh, he took it to the hole instead. 38 to 24 now. And Charlotte now goes 2-3 zone. That last possession was really the first time the Marshalls defense broke down. Charlotte's going to play a little zone now. Edmonds for his ACL last regular season game of last season. His minutes have really gone down because of the injury and, of course, the influx of talent here at Marshall. There's a traveling call against Elmore. Six turnovers now as we take a look at the standings in Conference USA and things are really tight. UAB trying to hold on. La Tech uh, can win their 20th uh, with that victory uh, coming up on ASM later tonight. And Kermit Davis, Middle Tennessee, just a dangerous basketball team. Well, Boise dangerous from outside, but uh, misfires. Kelly with yet another rebound. There's his double double. Well, he's just a man going up and getting rebounds. <laughs> Kelly from three. No hesitation, he was deep. Got a little smile on his face going down the court. <laughs> Dan D'Antoni just lets him play. You know, he just goes out, hey, be the best player on the floor. 13 points, four for eight field goal, 10 rebounds. Already a double-double for James Kelly. And he's two for four from long range, so that's 50%. They can live with that. Damage comes right back, misfires. And there's a whistle down low. It's gonna go against Edmonds. Justin Edmonds, the senior out of Albion, Michigan. That's his first. <laughs> Well, it's only 14 fouls now on Marshall with a 2.44 to go. Well, I expected more points, but Charlotte has struggled to make shots. Credit Marshall's defense. They've been stingy. Charlotte shooting 28% after shooting 57 the last game. But Boise. White takes it to the rack again, and he has not hit a three yet, but he's got four field goals for eight points. Andrian White, he likes playing against Marshall. 30 points, 10 rebounds in that win on January 21st. He just plays his tail off. He just really attacks. Let's see how Marshall attacks this zone now. It bothered him the last possession. Catch and shoot for Luke. Browning, brand new 30. Nice touch from the free throw area. Thompson now with five. Yeah, Terrence Thompson found that dead spot in the zone right at the elbow. A little bit too strong by White, and Kelly might have gotten away with over the back there, but Browning, kick out. Elmore. We just love the pace. <laughs> it's just so much fun. I was thinking the same thing. It's a track meet out here. Reed Avi got away with a travel. And every uh, Marshall fan in the building tried to uh, alert the officials of that. You know, speaking of track meet, Randy Moss ran track here at Marshall. He ran the 200 meters in 21.15 seconds. Marshall basketball, they averaged scoring points every 25.7 seconds. <laughs> so Randy Moss a little bit faster than the thundering herd. But he didn't have to score. He no, he didn't ran. have to score, he just ran. <laughs> he played baseball here as well. A lot of people don't remember that. Boy, what a uh, terrific athlete Randy Moss is, was. 
I think is is probably the, the proper <laughs> term. He, I know he's a better athlete than you and I. I know that. Well, he could probably still play the game, right? <laughs> a little bit. Another block by Marshall, this time by Loop. Andrian White steps outside, nice. and that's his first three. You mentioned the 30 he dropped on Marshall. It capped off a seven-game stretch. He was averaging about 17 points. Five games after, he averaged about four. And then he just ignited a firestorm against Rice, and he's been red hot ever since. And this zone has changed the complexion of this game the last couple minutes. Thompson, right spot, right time. He's got seven. Terrence Thompson knows for the ball offense. Final 45 seconds of the first half, 42 to 29. Well, they really want White, don't they? They really are looking for him because he's hot. Ochibo takes it inside. Too much defense, a little bit too strong off the glass, out of bounds. It's going to be Marshall basketball. Boy, Dan D'Antoni, about three or four days before they opened up against Tennessee, said, I want to average 85 points. And as you pointed out, top of the broadcast, they are right at 85, 93 in conference play. So he's, he's getting what he wanted. In his playing career from 66 to 69, the Thundering Herd averaged over 84 points a game, and now his team basically mirrors that at 85 a game. And as he was quick to point out today, that was without a three-point line. Without a three-point <laughs> line. They, they probably would have been plus 90 had they had a three-point line, and he would have had a lot of them. And okay. Charlotte switches now from zone back to man in this late half possession. Seven on the shot clock. Try to sneak in the back door, and it's taken away by Ochibo. Six seconds. Kamich. They get the dunk, but they got away with another travel. Kamich probably dragged that uh, pivot foot. Aubie gets his first bucket. So Charlotte gets away with the the travel. We played 20 minutes, 42-31. Dan D'Antonio's not happy. Mark, your thoughts on the first 20 minutes. Well, I thought Marshall did a great job of lockdown defense, but things changed late in the half when Mark Price went zone. That seemed to bother Marshall. Well, Mark, you said to combine 200. We're going to hold you to that in the second half. We'll see what happens. But right now, the Thundering Herd with a comfortable 42 to 31 lead. Stevie Browning elevating. He's got four, but his team has 42. The ASN Studio is coming up after the break.
RF stick, you got me? Check, 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 check. Oh, let me, hold on. Why don't I turn myself on? There we go. Check, check, check. There we go. I got you now. Just took me a minute to figure it out. Ma Marshall doing what? Pace of play. Got it. Good. Okay. Thank you.
As we welcome you back inside the Cam Henderson Center in Huntington, 42 to 31. And Mark, the last two games, Charlotte's combined for 31 threes. They just had four, shooting 23 percent in the first half. Well, credit the length of Marshall's defense. They've gotten back in transition. They've hounded those shooters, but it's really been all about the pace of play for Marshall in the first half as they get up and down and they have attacked in Conference USA play as we look at James Kelly just ward off the defender and finish. They're averaging 93 points a game, 50% from the floor by taking quality shots like that, and 40% from behind the arc. And Stevie Browning can elephant right there. Marshall just in attack mode all of the time. Pace of play for Marshall has been good. I think it'll be more rapid here in the second half. And the big question, of course, in that Charlotte locker room, uh, did Mark Price call his team cream puffs again? Well, if he did, they're probably going to score about 60 again in the second <laughs> half. 66 in the second half against Rice, 66-27. They outscored the Owls, and right now they trail by 11. Largest lead in the ball game, 16 for Marshall. As we uh, take a look at the, uh, the numbers right there, last two games, 102 and a, and a half. 31 so far here in 20 minutes. And I said 200 plus combined tonight. I'm a little bit off that pace, but I'm sticking with it. Well, you probably didn't expect just four threes, four for 17 for Charlotte. They had the uh, opportunity to strike first here in the second half after the miss by Kelly. Davis, nice job of just weaving his way around and finding the opening. And that's the second time that Marshall's defense was not very good on the backside. We saw it in the first half. We saw it to open here in the second half. Boy, Davis averaging about 14 and a half in conference play, Mark. That's his first bucket. Have to take a look at the uh, the sheet. I don't know how many shots he took in the first half. <laughs> Nine turnovers now for the uh, Thundering Herd. As we mentioned, they come in averaging about 13. Well, so important for Charlotte to get their offensive legs here early in the half. That looks like a turnover. Kelly taken away by Charlotte, and Kelly keeps it alive. Or Ryan Taylor keeps it alive. And Marshall just simply throws it away. So a slow start for Dan D'Antoni. Or I should say kind of a sloppy start for Dan yep. D'Antoni's team. Very ragged right now to open the, the second half as Dan D'Antoni trying to get some reins on his offense. Well, Boise, 16 footer, a little bit too strong. Another offensive rebound for Charlotte. Well, Charlotte's really getting some good looks here to open up the second half. They've got to take advantage of it though. Playing with some extra intensity, but a good point you bring up because uh, they just a little extra pep in their step, but they haven't capitalized on the offensive end as of yet. Boy, Ryan Taylor just uh, like a runaway train that time, but he does draw the foul. So Andrian White uh, picks up his first. You know, Mike, I don't see the same defensive intensity from either team. I think these teams could explode offensively. I don't see them in a stance. I see them standing up some more defensively. These are two good offensive teams are going to expose that. Another good look for Marshall. Can't good, convert. Good hustle. Brand new 30. Browning, that's a three. If it goes, it doesn't. Ochivo with another rebound. That's eight for him now. Crossover. Finds the open man. White. That's a three. That's his second three in the ball game. That gives him 14. Now John Davis, number three in white. He's getting wherever he wants on the floor. That time James Kelly gets wherever he wants. Both teams really getting to the rim right now. Kelly with 15. It's almost like they're just both want to trade baskets here if they can make baskets. Well, Charlotte would love if White uh, really got hot right now because uh, White the last two games shooting 71% from long range. Unbelievable. 10 for 14. James Kelly just attacking the basket right there. Gets fouled, going to the rim. He's just so agile. Kelly three for four from the stripe so far tonight. 76 on the season. Already with a double-double. 
You know, speaking of double doubles, that's his 12th. He had 38 of those in junior college. And I'm sure Jim Laranaga down at Miami would, would like to still have him with the Hurricanes. Yeah. yeah, he'd fit in real well with that lengthy bunch. 6'8", 259 pounds. He's got that outside inside game. He can lead the break all 94 feet. You can't go under screens against him, that's for sure. He'll burn you from three. Well, we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, he had 27 and 14 at Charlotte. He's got 17 now. He may pass those numbers tonight. Let's see if Charlotte continue to be in attack mode and find good shots. Oh, Boise. Boise wide open, mm. can't convert. And I love the shots Charlotte's getting in the second half. They just can't knock anything down. Yeah, Boise hits that short jumper six out of 10 times. But both teams are trying to find their rhythm. Well, Mike, do we have a treat for you at the under 16? Well, that's the second time we've seen uh, Oboise missing. Are you going to give me a, a hint what the treat is at under 16? Let's just say it's someone that's lived about as long as you and I combined. As we take a look at Louis D'Antoni, oh. the former legendary high school basketball coach at Mullen High School, Mullins High School here in West Virginia. So what you're saying is he's over 100 years old? He's 102 years old, and wow. I will interview him at the under 16, so stay tuned. All right. One of the great legends in high school coaching basketball, the father of Mike and Dan D'Antoni. I can't wait to talk to him. Talk to him for the game. A lovely guy. I look forward to that. A great coach. 102 years of age, huh, sitting at his son's basketball game. That's, that's cool. So Kelly now with 13 rebounds. Uh, another miss by Elmore. So he's off to a cold start here in the uh, second half. Ochibo. Oboise. That's a three if it goes, and it does. So Oboise. That's his third three. Charlotte inching their way back into this game. This offensive lull by Marshall. Let's see if Kelly can answer. He can't. Boy, Luke was Luke right does. in the perfect spot. The loop and double figures with 10. And when he scores in double figures, usually that's really good news for Marshall. Up eight right now. Loop with 10 points and just six field goal attempts. Mentioned back in January, Marshall trailed by as many as 19. Charlotte trailed by 16 in the first half here. Ryan Taylor's going to pick up the foul. It's going to be his third. And uh, he's been kind of quiet. Mark he hasn't scored yet, averaging about 14 points a game. Now, Charlotte has been so good at finding and hunting down good shots against this Marshall defense, but still down eight. It seems like Charlotte's got good looks. They've been in a good flow. They just haven't quite been able to close the gap as aggressively as what I'm seeing from an execution point of view for Charlotte. It all starts with stops, though, doesn't it, on the defensive end? James Kelly with the block right there. Browning, it's a deep three, and it counts. Seven points now for Browning. That's his 35th three on the season. I'm trying to get something to Boise, the turnover. That's a three if it goes, and it does. So Elmore now with a 50, 51, and 52. He's got three threes, double figures with 11 points. And the lead is back to 14 for the Thundering Herd. Braxton O'Boise trying to keep Charlotte in the game. Little inside out, O'Boise knocks it down, but Thundering Herd still by 14. There we go. I got it now. 
Say game on ASN is brought to you by the Hands of Experience at St. Mary's Medical Center. Check one, two, three, four, five. Mike, check. Okay, and then where's my camera? Gotcha, right up there. There we go. I gotcha. My, Michael. Okay, Mike's gonna throw it to me, right? Got it. Tonight's Conference USA game on ASN is brought to you by the Hands of Experience at St. Mary's Medical Center ER. There's a clear choice when you have your next emergency. When it's serious, it's St. Mary's. And back in Huntington, 54 to 40, thundering herd at home with the lead over the 49ers of Charlotte. And uh, Mark Adams talked about that special treat. Well, let's uh, check in with Mark and find out. I'm with legendary high school basketball coach for the 1955 state championship team, Louis D'Antoni, the father of Dan and Mike D'Antoni. How is it to be the father of such two great coaches in the collegiate and the NBA level? It's great. I didn't think it ever would make it to that level, and I knew they'd be great college players, but I wasn't sure about it making it a level of going to the pros. You coached back in 1955, you coached for decades, you're a Hall of Famer in West Virginia. Tell me your greatest memory as a coach. My greatest memory has to be my winning the state championship against Huntington. Uh, we, that Huntington had uh, Leo Bird, which is a great player here, and we handled him pretty good, so we, we won the game, and uh, that was one of our highlights. You were married to Betty Jo Bailey for 57 years, one of the great coaches' wives of all time. What did she mean to your sons? She was a disciplinarian, and they, they have made sure they pay attention to what she said. And she was a great athlete herself. She was a great tennis player. And when she was 15 years old, she played against the champion in Texas. 15 years old, and she won the championship. Louis D'Antoni, a true coach's coach. He's an all-time legend, one of the great high school coaches in West Virginia history. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm next to a legend. Joseph Ochibo, the 6'10 senior out of Nigeria, the transfer from Pittsburgh, well, comes in with 12 double-doubles, 13 double-figure rebound games, and he's 
been struggling with that shot, especially missing three or four right at the rim, Mark. Well, he has been the rock. He has been the foundation of this turnaround for Charlotte. But credit the defense of one James Kelly. He's been matched up with Ochibo a lot of tonight. And Ochibo has had a tough time getting going offensively. See the nine rebounds there. That leaves him a 13 shy of breaking a Kenyon Martin single season conference USA rebound record. Wow, Kenyon Martin, University of Cincinnati, National Player of the Year. If he hadn't broke his leg in the conference right before the Conference USA tournament, they might have won the national title that year. If he doesn't break his leg, Tom Izzo probably doesn't have a national championship. <laughs> You're probably right, Bob Huggins does. Another miss by Ochibo inside. That's about five now for Ochibo. And you can see the frustration written on his face. Ball goes against uh, James. James Kelly blocked a shot early in this game, and Ochibo has never recovered from it. It seems like he's just waiting for someone to come over his shoulder the entire game. You just got to settle in, catch it, slow down, make the play. Joseph Ochibo just can't finish things tonight. That must be close. I hesitated when I said the foul. The foul was on Van Hook, making sure that's his third. It is his third. Wow, they go back door. They don't get the flush, but they get the bucket for Browning. Dan D'Antoni comes out of the timeout. He's a little bit of a riverboat gambler. He likes coming out with those backdoor lobs. That time, very well executed. So Marshall starting one for seven of the half. And right now, since one for seven, they've hit five straight. As they open up the 59 to 42 lead. Out of bounds. It's the second time they've missed the out of bounds. Point blank range. Two in a row. Well, that is demoralizing for Charlotte. Marshall smells blood. Good hustle by Davis, knocking it out of bounds. 13.29 to go. Basketball, a game of runs. Who's going to warm up for Charlotte in the second half? Here's an opportunity. Van Hook. His second field goal, he's got four. And the whistle on the foul goes against uh, Oboise. That's going to be his first. And that's going to be 14 fouls here on Charlotte here in the second half. The Oboise matched up with Stevie Browning. When Stevie Browning decides he's going to go to the basket, he just pins his ears back. He just commits completely. He's got that sixth gear. It's kind of deceiving. He kind of lulls you to sleep, and then he explodes. Bad pass to the inside shoulder. There's a turnover waiting to happen. That's the one area where Stevie Browning can really improve just on some of the decision making. Passing angles, passing to the outside shoulder. Believe me, Louis D'Antoni didn't win the state championship without passing to the outside shoulder. It's a simple thing, but it's a big thing. Kelly. Little drop step and knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Thompson. It'll be Charlotte basketball. 13 turnovers now for Marshall. So they're at their limit now with 12.54 to go. Crowd getting a little restless here in Huntington. Mark Price getting 31 points from the bench in the last game, 50 in the last two games combined. They've only got seven off the bench so far. Davis with the left hand. He's going to shoot two as uh, he draws the foul. So it goes against uh, Thompson. That's going to be his first and only the third or fourth now. Team foul on Marshall. You know, Mike, I was fascinated by Louis D'Antoni when I asked him about, did you think that Mike and Dan would be famous NBA and college coaches? And he said, no, I really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a classic answer. <laughs> well, really, uh, the kids grow up and they both make it to the NBA. That's uh, quite the yeah, accomplishment. Yeah. And they've changed the game of basketball. That's the other thing because of their innovative thinking and how they look at offense. I mean, Mike and Dan obviously coached together. Mike with that high octane NBA offense. And now Dan has brought that to Marshall. And look at the crowd we have tonight. People are buying in. Three and double figures now for Marshall. Elmore stops and pops. Kelly's there to clean up. He's a man. He's just a man. That's like the NBA. No boys allowed when you're around with James <laughs> Kelly. You better be a man in the paint there. 19 for Kelly. Oh, Boise, deep. Rims out. 
Another rebound for Kelly. Look at this outlet. And the touchdown pass to Luke gives it up. Put wow. the bucket. Burks. James Kelly, what an outlet pass. White trying to get something going. That one runs out, and Kelly has another rebound, but there's the whistle as Curran Scott goes down hard behind our camera. Cam Newton of the Carolina Panthers had a kind of a tough day in the Super Bowl because he couldn't do this. He couldn't get enough space to throw a ball that far for the layup for Marshall. James Kelly, remember that name. Louisiana Tech riding a four-game winning streak. Uh, they'll try to make it five straight as they head down to uh, San Antonio to take on UTSA. That game coming up right after our broadcast here on the American Sports Network. And then uh, tomorrow night we move over to the Ivy League. Uh, the Columbia Lions are home to take on Tommy Amaker and Harvard. That'll be a 6 o'clock Eastern uh, time uh, tip here on ASN. Check your local listings. Columbia at 6-2 in the Ivy. They need a win to keep pace with guys like Yale. And Maldo Lowe and Alex Rosenberg, two guys Rosenberg sat out all of last year, came back for a season, senior season. Maldo Lowe, a really good player for Columbia. Check out that game. Well, the 49ers with 11.59 to go to get something going after scoring over 100 their last two games. 103 and 102 and another miss for the 49ers. A bucket here puts Marshall up by 20. Burks off the dribble. Whistle before the shot. And it's going to be five team fouls as the foul goes against uh, John Davis. That's going to be his third. So Mark Price uh, watching the foul starting to mount up on his team. The 49ers, one for their last seven. Two for the last eight. Nice scoop shot by Andrian White. Now, Andrian White has definitely been a bright spot for Mark Price. He's been able to knock down shot. That kid just plays his backside off. As Charlotte now goes 2 3 zone. They were successful with this in the first half. Now Mark Price goes back to it. You know, Mark, I was, I was surprised when Mark Price said uh, White was actually recruited as a defensive stopper the way he's been scoring. Another three. It's starting to rain threes now. As Burks gets one, that's his first. Little runner, a little bit too strong. Brown with the rebound, and uh, there's a frustration foul on Andrian White. Marshall is starting to shoot free and clear now. They're shooting the ball with a lot of confidence. That's bad news for Charlotte, up 19. And when this team gets on a roll, they score in bunches and they bury you. Mentioned uh, three fouls. That's three on White. So Mark Price with three of his players with three. Here, Mike, as I mentioned, I had Charlotte early in the season. I walked out of the arena that night as James Kelly takes a shot and a miss, wondering 
can this team win five games? They've already won six games in Conference USA. Mark Price and his staff have done a tremendous job with this with this team. He has six of the last eight for the 49ers. Browning in transition. 19 rebounds for Kelly now. 19 points, 19 rebounds. That's pretty impressive. 20 rebounds. And 20 rebounds and four fouls on Andrian White. And as Mark, as you pointed out, he's been the, uh, the bright spot offensively for Charlotte with 16 points. So now he's going to have to go out with four with 10 19 to go. Yeah, you just feel Marshall exerting their will right now. James Kelly has just been taken over on the rebounding end with outlet passes. You got Browning going out on the break. You got Elmore as a great option from the three point line. It's a well constructed offensive basketball team by Dan D'Antoni. And with this free throw, Kelly will be a 20 20 man tonight. 20 points, 20 rebounds. Jeez, okay. And there's still 10 minutes to go in this thing. <laughs> At 12 uh, double doubles, that ties Ochibo for the uh, conference lead. I mean, I've seen a lot of guys around the country, but just from a physical talent perspective, James Kelly is at the top of the list that I've seen this year. I haven't seen anybody 6'8", 250 plus, runs the floor, shoots it, finishes on the block, can defend, can block shots. I mean, this kid is unbelievable. And he got a standing ovation as he uh, heads for the bench now over on the Marshall side. And oftentimes, Mike, the national media just doesn't take time to appreciate guys like James Kelly. And it's a shame because that kid is as good as anybody in the country. This kid can shoot. Love his form. Yeah. You always feel like it's going in, don't you? <laughs> Just soft. I'm sure every time he releases it, he thinks it's going in. Yeah, he's got a lot of confidence. Let's put it that way. There's a trap in the corner now. And Hook breaks the trap, kind of fights his way through. But they throw the ball away. Another turnover by the 49ers. And this one's getting away from uh, Charlotte right now. Conference USA season high 21 rebounds. That's a tie with Ochibo. How much fun is Conference USA tournament going to be? Anyone's game, of course, UAB playing in Birmingham. A Boise. Boy, a Boise is really cooled off. He's been red hot, too. 51% from long range over the last seven games, averaging about 16 points. Taylor muscles his way in, a whistle before the shot. Another foul goes against the 49ers. That's going to be 18 fouls. So Ryan Taylor will be in the bonus. Still looking for his first basket. The foul goes against. Kamich, that's going to be his first, but the 18th foul. Ryan Taylor, in all fairness to Taylor, though, he spent most of the first half on the bench with two fouls. And Mike, you mentioned Conference USA Tournament. Of course, it's in Birmingham, Alabama, but the, the games will actually play at Legacy Arena, not at Bartow Arena. It still seems like pretty much a home game <laughs> to me for the Blazers. I was going to say, if you'd see the crowd that you in your own bed, yeah, year. yeah. Well, listen, they deserve it. They, they've got a tremendous team. Knocked off Iowa State last year. They're on a roll right now. They're leading the conference. One game ahead of Middle Tennessee. Kamich misfires. Boy, Mark Rice really needs Kamich to... Uh, he was recruited as a shooter out of junior college. There's a whistle, and Aubie gets nailed above the eye. But the foul will go against Charlotte, I believe. Ryan Taylor goes in for the shot, and Anthony Van Hook kind of sends a message right there. <laughs> he's going to make sure he's going to block it, that's for sure. And he's playing the ball. Dan D'Antoni jumped off the bench. He wanted a flagrant. It was assertive, but I agree. He was trying to block. Just to send a message, but nothing, uh, nothing flagrant or egregious, I don't believe. You know, sometimes in a game like this, though, when there's frustration and they're down by 21, an official might call it a flagrant just to keep control of the game. Although it, Van Hook definitely was playing the ball. Now, did he come down aggressively? Yes, but I don't think there was any intent to hurt anybody on this play. So 
So Ryan Taylor will be going to the line. All right, so we're looking at two things. We're looking at a potential elbow on the opposite end because a Charlotte player took an elbow, Aubie took an elbow to the face, it looked like, and they're going to review that to see if there was anything there. Well, that and was then Andrew and White, huh? Andrew yeah. White. And then they're going to look at the block shot by Van Hook to see if there was anything there. So we're actually reviewing two different plays right now. My guess is we're going to play on based on the body language of the officials. Well, D'Antoni's getting a good laugh over there. As he, uh, as <laughs> Rarely do you see an official to coach slap five over a disagreement. How great is that? Usually slapping a T, huh? Well, when you're up 21, you can afford to have a little bit of a sense of humor. Here they come. Okay, good explanation. So no illegal contact on either end, and we will play on. That was a pretty quick review for two plays. I like that. <laughs> So Taylor's still scoreless. He's already passed Dan D'Antoni on the scoring list. Joining the 1,000 point club here at Marshall, only a junior out of Indianapolis. And he gets his first point. Lowest scoring total for Taylor this year on the season, six. But again, he's averaging about 14. Boy, boys, he thought he had a three point shot, and uh, Browning just closed on him. Let's look inside. And Reed Obby's uh, getting more minutes with each passing game. He's got six points. From Anthony Van Hook, he's a nifty little passer inside. Charlotte back to the 2-3 zone. So Obby uh, averaging about six minutes a game. He got more against uh, North Texas, now still in the ball game. So Mark Price trying to get some depth before that Conference USA tournament. Look at Kelly, all smiles, huge double-double. <laughs> Van Hook picks up his fourth. Marshall. James Kelly, inside, outside. You're looking at an NBA guy right there. That's James Kelly. Marshall by 20, 71 of 51. You see John Elmore there, went to VMI, wasn't recruited heavily, even though he was the player of the year in West Virginia. Became eligible December 14th, and boy, has he really helped that team. He came back to be with his ailing grandfather, and man, has he made a difference here in the second half of the season for Marshall. His last three games, he's averaged nearly 23 points a game. He has shot 50% from behind the arc with 24 assists and seven turnovers, Mike. That kid just continues to get better and better every time Dan D'Antoni asks him to suit it up. Seven threes two games ago for Elmore against UTSA. Five in the last game. And he's got four again tonight. Look at those numbers. Yeah, impressive. 45 percent. Eight assists a game. Eight assists a game. And only seven turnovers the entire time during those three games. Well, he's just been tremendous. Earlier I said he reminded me of Jason Williams and of course Jason Williams played his high school ball in this area 
before going down to play for Billy Donovan at Florida. Boy, that guy could play too, huh? Jason oh, Williams. Oh, man, he was a magician. Randy Moss, his high school teammate. Nice drive by Van Hook. So Joseph uh, Ochibo, one for seven. He's got nine rebounds, but he had nine rebounds at halftime. So he's been quiet tonight, but he's not the only one struggling with their shot for Charlotte. Taylor with a nice spin move, drop step, and Van Hook rips down the rebound. I like that kid. He's got a motor. And he gets it up in transition. Nice feed to Davis. Now Anthony Van Hook does a lot of little things for this basketball team that sometimes go unnoticed. That wow. doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah. Austin Loop. That's his third three. 67 now. He had 84 of those last year. But last year, Dan D'Antoni really depended on him to get hot from outside. They got more three-point shooters, obviously, this season. 76-55, we mentioned uh, Marshall winning nine of the last 12. Charlotte, six of the last eight, both with back-to-back -back wins coming in. But this has been all thundering her. Austin Loop is a 3.63 GPA as a triple major in biomechanics, clinical exercise physiology, and psychology. I'm exhausted just talking about it. <laughs> I'm intimidated by listening to it. 3.63 grade point average. There's an over the back, and it's going to go against uh, Benis uh, Gracionis. Well, that's the first time Gracionis, he's hit 71% of his shot over the last six games, but he, he has not been in the game, even though Ochibo hasn't played well. Well, James Kelly with 21 tonight, John Elmore with 14, Ryan Taylor with only three, but Stevie Browning with 11, Austin Loop with 13. Loops the guy, that X Factor guy, when he's making shots and double figures, then Marshall becomes really, really dangerous. Oboise. But Marshall's been doing a great job closing out on Oboise. Taylor gives it up. Kamich found the opening and took it. Usually a three-point shooter. He's got five. Junior Kides transfer, one of those guys that had to meld into Mark Price's offense. Kelly from deep, <laughs> just easy. Just makes the game look easy. Well, he looked like he was warming up pregame. He's got 24. Fifty-seven three-point attempts combined by the two teams. We need some scoring though to get to my 200 total. <laughs> we, we need we need a, a quick run here over the last 525. I'm starting to root for every shot to go in now, <laughs> just to be right, you know. Well, Charlotte has scored over 100 the last uh, couple of games of Boise, where the crowd wanted offensive goaltending on uh, Gracionis. I think the officials are happy just to play on. And Marshall had back-to-back 100-point -back games on February 4th and 6th. And one of those games, they lost. They scored 108 points and lost. It's kind of like Michigan against Loyola Marymount back in, what, 1990? Yeah. It was a 149 yeah. to 115. Bo Kimball and that bunch and the left-handed free throws to honor yeah. Hank yeah. Gathers. What a story that was as Hank Gathers really Passed. died on the court. On a Sunday night, he was leading the nation in scoring when he passed yeah. away. So Paul right. Westhead was the head coach then for Loyola Marymount. Like, can you imagine being in the NCAA tournament, scoring 115 and, and losing, losing by that yeah. much? So Taylor were all four points from the uh, charity stripe. So Dan D'Antoni, once they put this one in the books, he'll go to 10 and three in Conference USA, just his second season as the head coach. After an 0 and six start, the first part of the season was basically brought to you by losers by weekend. They were just up for a Grammy, by the way. <laughs> Lately, though, they've been in the winner's circle by 50 Cent. So I'm trying to be oh, like, geez. yeah. Uh, you know 50 Cent. Oh, man. Be watching Kanye West may show up and upstage you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd enjoy it. I did that just for you, Paul. Okay. Just for you. Weekend's pretty good, by the way. I like weekend. 50 Cent, I, I, you know, it's acquired taste. <laughs> I haven't mentioned Taylor Swift yet, though. Huh? Oh, come on. And Kanye West, Taylor Swift. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a scratch. Okay. 
80 to 62, 434 to go. Here we're talking about the Grammys, huh? I mean, yeah. Uh, I didn't expect that when this game started. I had it in my hip pocket just in case. <laughs> Whistle away from the ball. Whistle called down on the baseline. That's going to be. It's going to be four fouls uh, called on uh, Ryan Taylor now. Four points, four fouls. Van Hook goes to the line. Well, that's a coaching. That's a coaching staff right now. Certainly disappointed. But here's what I'm impressed about with Mark Price. He doesn't get too low. He doesn't get too high. He just continues to teach his way to play the game. And what he's done at Charlotte this year, from the beginning of the season till now, as a former coach, I'm envious of the job that he's done. I think he came into this season with a lot of different parts. Some were not Conference USA players. I think he's developed the shooting acumen of this team. They're always well prepared. They found a style of play that fit them running up and down the floor. I admire what Mark has done with this team. And he lost three players, two yep. freshmen. No one went to Wake, one went to NC State, one yep. went to Illinois. And so uh, Andrian White just fouled out with 16 points. Andrian White played well. He was a bright spot tonight for Charlotte. And uh, Kelly's back on the line with 24 mentioned 30 points games he's got four 30 point games that's the most in conference USA five points away from another one Dan Dan Tony he's like a stand-up comedian <laughs> you know especially when he's up he's a lot funnier when he's winning there's no question about that but just visiting with him today and getting an opportunity to sit down and, and visit with his dad you know this is a coaching family and they've got they, they've got a really good perspective on what it takes to win how to run a program how to let players have fun. Always enjoy his uh, shoot arounds because you know he's going to come over and give you a smile and give you an antidote and uh, some of his NBA experiences. Some good, some not so good. And he tells tells it like it is yeah. some of those NBA <laughs> players. Boy, Kelly now with uh, 26 points, 23 rebounds. That was a career for me in high school. Burks. I'm, I'm shocked you got 23 rebounds. <laughs> I said a career, not a season. <laughs> I'm not talking, uh, maybe that's JV and, and varsity. Yeah. So Kelly going for another 30 points performance. Boy, stepping outside an NBA range for three. Remember that name, James Kelly. NBA will be his next stop when he's done here at Marshall. Marshall up on 19 with 3.54 to go. So let's say they go to 10 and 3. Uh, they have the tiebreaker of a Middle Tennessee. Uh, UAB and Middle Tennessee will meet on Sunday. Both are idle until Sunday. 
And of course, uh, you're playing for a regular season championship, but seeding in Birmingham, that's that's on the back of the minds of a lot of coaches. You know, a team like Old Dominion right now, it's seven and five with their offensive firepower. That's a team that could get hot. Middle Tennessee, I think they're dependent upon, when you talk about Giddy Potts and Reggie Upshaw, as we take a look at some of the out-of-town scores with Old Dominion over Western Kentucky, 26 to 23, and North Texas and FIU, a tough matchup there. So Kelly with 27. Don't forget Louisiana Tech coming up uh, with UTSA right after this broadcast. 27 points, 23 rebounds, and an impressive 10 for 11 from the stripe tonight. I think Perrin Buford is the big key for Middle Tennessee. When he plays well and he's athletic, then all of a sudden Kermit Davis and Middle Tennessee become awfully hard to guard. You know, we're talking about North Texas. It's a kid named Eric Katenda. And there's a video out there right now the Conference USA put together on everything he's been through with the eye injury to knee injuries just to play for North Texas. It's a wonderful story. Go out online, check it out through Conference USA. Eric Katenda, North Texas. I watched it today. It's about an eight-minute video. And when you talk about what guys go through to play, that guy went through a lot. Yeah, Tony Benford, the head coach of North Texas, saying that you know, he came from Notre Dame. A lot of the guys backed away from him because yep. of the eye injury, but he's been a big addition for Benford down there in Denton, Texas. And Katenda is so grateful for his opportunity at North Texas. It's just a tremendous story. There's a tip inside, and the bucket goes to Milan Miovic, the 6'9", 243 Serbian. So uh, D'Antoni going to the bench. Browning goes out. 11 points. Well, there's no better feeling in coaching than in February when you start emptying your bench with about four minutes to go. Whoa! Wow. How about that for an acrobatic shot by the freshman Burks? CJ Burks with the finish. So he's got nine. Just a point away from another double figure score. Scott drives. He's going to be fouled. And Ideen Penova. CJ Burks, look at this on the back side, little right leg kick right there. You get the feeling like Marshall kind of wants to hang 100 tonight. <laughs> They they always, they get always Lancy, wanna, you know? They always want to get to that century mark, don't they? Yeah. And then the crowd can feel it. Is there pizza involved with that? I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm just wondering. Burks, boy, his first collegiate start dropped 20 on the Bobcats of Ohio University. So Elmore goes out. So Elmore has 14, four threes. I like that kid's game. He's got some size at the guard. He loves that up-tempo offense. Originally went to play for Duger Balcom at BMI, and Balcom went to the Citadel, and of course, John Elmore, his grandfather, was, was ill, and he wanted to come home. That was the reason why. But he chose a pretty good up-tempo program here. No doubt about that. He's got 16 threes in the last three games now. There's a three if it goes, and it doesn't. That was Brett Bowling, the sophomore out of uh, Pineville, West Virginia. This is uh, Cameron Pappas. So Mark Price uh, going deep on his bench as well. Kamich just can't find that stroke tonight. He hit that first three and uh, hasn't hit one since. Well, it's just not been a good offensive night for Charlotte. It's just, just that simple. So Scott's fouled, and the question is, was he fouled uh, in the act of shooting or before the shot? Foul goes against uh, Miovic. His first nine team fouls now on Marshall with two minutes and eight seconds to go. Charlotte opened this game eight for 30. That's the kind of night it's been for Charlotte. Yeah, they hit uh, 17 threes two games ago, 14 threes last game. They were four for 17 in the first half. Yeah, they're number 28 in the country in three point field goal percentage going into this game at 39 percent but it just hasn't happened for charlotte tonight yeah in conference play too they're shooting about what 40 42 and a half percent from three actually uh that's tops in conference usa yep. in conference play damage with a hop skip and a jump and a block from behind 
by Jacob Kilgore, another player of the year here in West Virginia. Good cut. So Bowling uh, tries to uh, feed Idin Penova, another freshman from Bosnia. But both teams have shot 63s combined. But I feel confident we're going to fall short of my pregame prediction of 200 <laughs> think so? points combined. Yeah, I, I didn't hit on that one tonight. I'm a little disappointed about that. Cameron Pappas showing his uh, three-point stroke. Gets the three. Amiovic with the drive. Penova with the shot. A little bit too strong. Well, minute 13 to go, 87 points. I'm not sure if they're going to hit that century mark or not, but it's going to be a victory. Nice drive by Scott. You know, Marshall served notice early on when they went 5-0 and to open conference play that they were going to be a player with Dan D'Antoni in this conference. And tonight, I see more of the same. With James Kelly, you got a shot against anybody on every night. Burks. Well, Burks looking like Steve Nash the last couple of minutes out there handling the ball. Two on the shot clock for Bowling's giving up. Penova with another three. Leaves it short. Final 30 seconds. Well, Charlotte will regroup from this. They'll have better offensive nights. Nice little feed inside there for Aubie. aubie has got eight points off the bench for Mark Price. Taking a shot or two to the face during the game as well. Tough kid. 9-0 run over the last two minutes and 13 seconds. Too little, too late for Charlotte, though. This one's going to go down as an 87 to 72. Marshall showing a lot of class, not even uh, approaching the basket on that final possession. So Dan D'Antoni in the second year goes to 10 and 3 in Conference USA action. And keep in mind, UAB Middle Tennessee will play on Sunday. Well, Mark Adams, uh, what do you think? The first half, second half. Second half was kind of sloppy. But a very impressive victory for Marshall. Here's what I've learned in this game, that James Kelly is going to be a load for anybody to try to defend. And this Dan D'Antoni offense, hard to get back on. Marshall's got a shot to win this thing. They're that good, especially with Kelly when he's on his A game. Speaking of Kelly, another double-double. That puts him at 12 double-doubles, tied for the lead uh, with uh, Joseph Ochibo. 27 and 23 for Kelly. Well, those are big time numbers as we uh, light up that uh, standings once again as Marshall. Yeah, I like the way they pushed them ahead of uh, Middle Tennessee there, 10 and 3, since they do have the tiebreaker. And we still have a long way to go here before we get to Alabama in Legacy Arena for Conference USA Tournament. If you haven't bought tickets yet, you better start because there's some great players in this league. You saw one of them in James Kelly here this evening. All right, 30 seconds, Mark. Mark Price. Goes in the locker room. What does he tell his team? And where do they go from here? I think he tells his team to forget about it, move on to the next one. Let's go make some shots at our next opportunity. They just missed some shots tonight. They look like a leg-weary team. You mentioned Ochiba with 21 rebounds the first time these two teams met. So Kelly has 23 rebounds. That's uh, one off the NCAA season high of Brian Johnson uh, from North Carolina. So Kelly, 27 points, 23 rebounds, a big victory. For Marshall, they go to 10 and 3 and 14 and 12 overall. For Mark Virginia. Adams and our entire ASN crew, Mike Leeson saying a so long from Huntington to West Virginia. The final score once again, 87-72. The thundering herd of Marshall victorious. They're 10 and 3 in Conference USA action. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to americansportsnet.com. This has been a presentation of ASN, the American Sports Network. Your teams, your passion. Your network. So long, everybody, from Huntington, West Virginia.